want to thank Full uh, for everybody here today, S staying here physically, if not mentally as well. Um, so if you zone out at any point, you can just refer to the reading material. Um, I wanted to acknowledge uh, Trevor's comments earlier uh, about The Economist, because that was actually one of my reasons for coming into public health, uh, was that uh, studying the efficiency or the strategic mechanisms in public health are really interesting to me. Uh, so starting off here, I, I uh, did my practicum a, at Island Health in the public health department, working under the program manager for food security, healthy living, and community health networks. She's got a big bundle there. Uh, and my project was about community partnerships for upstream prevention. And uh, so defining the project here, moving upstream has always been a, an interest uh, of mine. And after being in several courses with Trevor and uh, with Victoria Barr, this was a, like a, a major motivator, and it still is. And part of that efficiency mindset has been, what can you do upstream to stop, or what can you put your efforts towards in a strategic fashion to uh, not have chronic health chronic diseases uh, showing up rampant in the population, which, thank you, Jennifer, for throwing up a graphic about that. Um, I didn't need to do it. There you go. Um, so part of the reasons, we don't have that much funding in public health. Uh, the respective numbers for each of these, uh, well, for the island health there, VHA, it's about $58 million uh, are spent on public health. And in the community partnership realm, it's even less than that. Uh, my project included multiple components. Uh, I did first a scoping review to review the uh, literature for effective elements in community partnerships. And then a CHN for community health networks. You'll see the CHN a lot. Um, the CHN alignment document, which was matching the community health network action areas under uh, or with the local health area data, which you can see on the little diagrams there. I'll get to those ones a little bit later. Uh, just to give you a sense, the island has 14 local health areas, four, six, four, and then this diagram only has six CHNs on it because during my practicum, a seventh was established in Comox. Uh, Sari is involved with that, so we got to connect through there. Uh, so firstly, the scoping review. Uh, what's been said? Uh, the question that I initially started with was, are CHNs effective? And that is a unanimous yes and no. Um, so then, well, what makes them effective? Well, OK, so we've got to figure that out. So just to go a little bit deeper, they've been formed on the island since 2006. Uh, and from Island Health, they receive shared leadership, financial and kind support. And their focal points are specifically to focus upstream in the social determinants, healthy built environment, and individual streams. So for my methods, I, I uh, started off with some initial papers suggested by my uh, supervisor and tried to perform the search with community health networks. The problem is that the terminology with community health networks is extensively involved around healthcare services and not actually in the realm where public health doesn't actually reach in the community, and that's why community partnerships. So recognizing the terms, there are community partnerships, collaborations, coalitions, collectives, uh, collective impact initiatives. So I had to adopt my methods to be able to not perform five different searches with however many results that would have done. Uh, so what I did is I worked backwards from some reviews uh, more recently. Uh, content screened abstracts and uh, actual papers, and went through the citations, identifying some root cause models. Um, so it's sort of a root cause analysis, citation analysis backwards, and then summarize the elements. And here are the summary points, only text one. Uh, democratic governance, building ownership within the community, and as well as building ownership within the uh, stakeholders in the uh, actual community health network. Uh, developing a strategic plan across multiple ecological layers, developing strong measurement tools, which is one of the ones that I'm sure everybody has recognized is necessary, uh, seeking collab uh, community collaboration and strong leadership. The constraints, these are only four. There were many more. Uh, I mean, interpersonal, personal constraints, 
My main takeaways, processor output is a very valuable income uh, in the face of not having a formal evaluation done. The use of terminology is very important. I think that a lot of uh, papers have tried to, or a lot of initiatives have tried to earmark their own way into uh, being innovative and they've changed their terminology, which ends up confusing the search results and makes it really difficult to uh, make a compelling case. And then CHNs can get completely overcomplicated. Uh, I really like IKEA furniture. I don't know about you guys, but yeah, you can see the paradox there, right? Okay. Um, so the secondary document was the CHN alignment document, and I'm trying to show the CHN efforts and the upstream activities. Uh, this was done with the local health area data, the CHN actions, and extracting the impactful data, identifying the action areas, and then this is the starting process for being able to support an evaluation for the community health networks through Island Health. So we're trying to gain some executive support uh, for formally evaluating the CHNs. So again, here's the 14, and just an example of the LHA data uh, document. They, there, I think there's over 100 um, indicators that these LHAs uh, cover, and so, and so you see some in the social determinants of health, some are morbidity statistics, mortality statistics, health utilizations, um, so you have an island health average, and I just threw up Alberni here as an example, and then a plus or minus 10% uh, from the island health average is that gray bar, and then you see, you know, uh, employment, or, yeah, they say employment, and then they write unemployment, which I thought was kind of, you know, um, <laughs> ironic. Um, and they've got little red markers. So we started with just selecting out the red markers, but then found that uh, once we started linking them to some of the community health networks, there were still impactful pieces of data that weren't flagged red based on an average, which we've talked about averages in a couple presentations this, uh, these two days, and how that muddles the, uh, the picture. So in the community health network actions, or the actions area, if you've looked at that little piece of paper by now, um, these were done through uh, surveying reporting from each of the community health networks. Uh, so in the social determinants or in the healthy built environment linkages, they kind of put the primary focus, not a focus, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, in the planning documents, so the strategic plans or mission documents for each of the community health networks, here are the six Comox just formed. So I was actually involved in, uh, and Lisa as well, was involved in the uh, uh, planning day, I guess, um, with the community, and then consultation. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it says Betty Taylor. I see it's two minutes. Uh, it says Betty Taylor on there, and I found that this is the phone that they use at Island Health, so I thought it was really funny to just include here. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm talking to Betty. Um, <laughs> so the first concept was building these pods, which included actionary in the center, and I'm just including this small example. I blanked out the responses, but on the little white boxes, You'll f they, there were uh, actual descriptions in the survey reporting, and so I linked a social determinant, healthy built environment, related stream, and the targeted age group, uh, all together around what the initiative was, or the action area, which you can see sort of connected there, and the clusters, uh, so we formed along a social determinant spine, data connected, it was a little bit too messy, so we went with the further objective of, okay, Simplify. Just make it easier for people to read. I got you. Sliders, uh, they came social determinants. They all just made nice sliders. Intervention streams, they made nice sliders. There's uh, all of the 12 social determinants, the five healthy built environment linkages, and then seven related intervention streams. Um, and then you've got the document in front of you now, but this is sort of one side of the final uh, communications document. And then the back sheet, which has, uh, and so this is for each of the community health networks, and there's all, all six of them. Uh, so we did this with the cooperation of the medical health officers, the community health network leads, and then those planning documents uh, in the consultation. Moving forward, uh, I'm still incorporating some feedback, but it's almost done, which is wonderful. Um, increasing support for the evaluation, moving forward obviously. Uh, limitations I found were scope, 
uh, time and uniformity. I wanted to point out again uniformity because of all of the gotcha, all, all of the uh, recognition of terms. Next steps: evaluating. Uh, I'm currently developing an evaluation plan to move forward from these uh, these action areas, and we're going to go and seek formal funding. Uh, identifying the specific outcome indicators for each of the action areas to establish if the CHNs have been effective. And step I don't know, determine the contributions of the community health networks in improving population health or public health, because everybody matters. And I want to say a specific thank you to my family and friends, to my first reader, second reader, uh, Sari and Michael Hayes here, and uh, to all of you for helping along with the ride. Oh, and my people watching online, practicum, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was a very lively presentation. Okay, questions for Matts. There was a lot there. There was a lot to there cover. Was. That's impressive. Very impressive. <laughs> Thank you. I'm tired. <laughs> okay, question. <gasps> Oh, Lacey. That's, hello. Hello. Um, okay, you might not have gotten into this area very much, but way back at the beginning when you were outlining success in creating a network, community health network, yep. um, you talked about building ownership. Did you look at any of the specific mechanisms in creating successful ownership, or is it enough to just, is it enough to just be included, to be at the table? How do you build um, ownership? We didn't specifically look at it, but actually in the Comox, uh, like in the Comox meeting, and I went to a Qualicum meeting as well, which uh, Qualicum is Oceanside uh, Health and Wellness. Um, there was a specific recognition in the room that the people in the room were not necessarily reflective of the populations that they needed to be serving. Right. Um, so I think that that building ownership piece was reflected in all of these people investing their time and quite a few actually contributing funds. Mm -hmm. But building that ownership within the community, I think, is going to need a lot more of the outreach piece, mm -hmm. which the, I mean, some of the meetings, the times they're held, don't coincide with people who are on a minimum wage job who are doing that. So I think that they're making a, con like a concerted effort to go to okay. those populations and find it, which I think will be actually included in the evaluation framework is there um, as, as a process indicator. Are you involved in the evaluation? I am starting the evaluation plan, but the evaluation has precisely this much funding okay. as of right now. We should so, chat though. So we got to connect. Okay. Good. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. You're off the hook. <laughs>